Hey, everybody, this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey is brought to you by our title sponsor, NHL Sense Arena. Look, we all want our kids to succeed in hockey, but let's face it, finding training that's both effective and enjoyable can be a real challenge, and not to mention expensive and a total drain on time, especially if you have to drive to the rink, uh, pay a, a private instructor. There's so many reasons that uh, money gets spent on this game. But that's where NHL Sense Arena steps in. It's a virtual reality training game that brings the rink into your home that takes off-ice training to a new reality. It's designed to improve hockey sense and IQ, something that's lacking majorly in the game today for both players and goalies. And you get unlimited access to over 100 drills and training plans from top coaches and players that can be played anytime, anywhere with drills approved by USA Hockey player and goalie development directors. Look, improving mental hockey skills at home has really never been more fun and any hockey player that uses this is going to have a blast, all right? I've used this before on my own, and it feels like you're so immersed in an arena, you sometimes forget you have a headset on. And again, it's not being on the ice, but it allows you to work on some of these skill sets like scanning, as I said before, hockey IQ, looking around the rink, making the right plays, that getting those repetitions in now as a hockey player are super important for your development. So NHL Sense Arena is giving all the listeners an exclusive offer for $50 off an annual plan when you use our code Hockey Never Stops at checkout. Again, that's Hockey Never Stops. All you got to do is go to hockey.sensearena.com. Uh, Again, that's hockey.sensearena.com. Use the code Hockey Never Stops, and you'll save $50 on your an annual plan of NHL Sense Arena. Make sure to check that out and enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. <laughs> Got another question from an audience member today, and it is one of the best questions we've ever gotten here uh, from, from Michael out in Arizona. Uh, and, and the question basically is, what do you do when you're a Monday morning coach as a fan, right? What do you do when you're the dad or the mom of a player on the team and you have an opinion and you want to share that with the coaching staff? We try our best to answer that question today. So you're going to hear the audio in a minute from uh, from Michael and his question. I want to encourage all of you, if you have questions that you want us to answer, Feel free to record a little bit of a voicemail. Send it over to us at team at Our Kids Play Hockey. We love getting questions from you. Um, and I say it all the time. We have plenty of topics we can talk about. But at the end of the day, this is your show. We want to answer the questions that you have. So, again, today we're, we're answering the Monday morning parents question of what do you do when you want to tell the coaching staff that you think you know, uh, uh, have some tips, or you, you want to talk to them about the team this year. Uh, to maybe make them better. That answer is coming up. Also, want to remind all of you, you get a pretty nice discount over at HockeyWrapAround.com. They have the world's leading hockey blade protector to protect your kids. $300, $400, $500, $600 dollars sticks, because we all have more than one nowadays. Uh, they also have the patented dry stick technology, which allows you to dry your gear on the stick in a very concise area. Um, and you get 20% off of that year-round when you use the code OKPH on HockeyWrapAround.com. Or just check the website. You never know. They have deals there all the time. So again, HockeyWrapAround.com, HockeyWrapAround.com, HockeyWrapAround.com. Use the code OKPH for 20% off your entire order. But without further ado, let's hear from Michael in Arizona and his fabulous question for us this week on Our Kids Play Hockey. Hey guys, uh, Michael calling from Arizona. First time uh, caller, first time listener. And my question for you is regarding Monday morning coaches. Uh, I tend to be um, what I would not would, I would call a helicopter parent per se, but certainly Monday morning coach, never played hockey, have enjoyed the game for a long time, at least as far as a fan goes. But uh, as a parent, I definitely, definitely have um, a lot of thoughts about things that I see on the ice that should be coordinated differently, done differently. Uh, practice, uh, the way that practices are coordinated and run versus the issues that show up on game day. And my question for all of you is, um, what's the healthy dose, right? What's the healthy dose between uh, being a parent that provides input to the coaching staff and crossing that line where all of a sudden uh, you, you think that you're actually more knowledgeable about the game than the actual people that have played the game and that have invested their time, energy, and effort as coaches. I do believe that there is a, a balance between the two. I think that there is certainly an opportunity for parents to provide coaches with input uh, simply because just like coaches were there 
at the rink all the time with our kids. But my question for you is, is that, um, is that healthy, right? Is it healthy? Is it good for the club? Um, is there, should there be a platform where parents can interact consistently with coaches to provide feedback as far as some of the things that we see and witness uh, during practice, during games that we believe can make the team more successful. Thank you very much for taking my call. God bless. Bye-bye. Yeah, so I could I could have called that in. I'm Monday morning coach, I think, for a lot of my kids' programs. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why we record episodes on Monday mornings, I think. Why just... <laughs> I, am Monday, I, I am definitely a Monday morning coach. Um, yeah, it's a tough question because, well, there's, there's so much in there that um, is positive and scary right i think there's a right. lot in there that there's a lot in there that we all have the same anxiety we're in a youth hockey world this is not i'm assuming this this guy's son you know he, he's not playing for uh you know the san jose sharks you know he's not a, he's not a dad of a pro hockey player saying how come my kids not like my guy's not playing more and his contract says this this is like the parent of a 12 u could be a parent of an 8 u right six u all of us are in the same boat um we're parents we love our children we we see from the lens of 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 our kid like we just see our child and maybe our friend's kids but it is it's a very difficult situation so we i think we could break down in the episode today a lot of strategies around this right but i don't think there's a hard and fast answer because there's so many variables to i mean i think one of the one of the things that you know that got my ear a little bit was well I'm a parent that didn't play hockey, but I'm depending on, I think I might be more knowledgeable than the person who played hockey. And you may in fact be right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just because somebody played the sport and can say, well, I was the captain of my high school team and therefore I can, I should be able to coach this 12 U team successfully. Uh, isn't always the case. That's not like, it's not a hard and fast rule. Um, like again, I did, I never played lacrosse growing up, but I, I I guarantee I'm a better lacrosse coach than 90% of the lacrosse coaches I work with. Right. Played right. that played Division One lacrosse. I just am I'm better. Um, and I think that so it's <laughs> so it's just just when we see this, it's like okay, well, is a really good way to dive in. I think that it, it, so many different silos of of just this one conversation, which probably happens, uh, uh, you know, on on the text message chains at work every morning, right? The right. 15 parents that get on the text message chain and it just starts. Well, well, basically this happens to, you know, all of the parents that, that on Monday morning, there's hundreds of thousands of parents around the world right now going back and forth and zipping each other back, you know, about what went well, what didn't go well. And, you know, that's where we're at, right? That's just going to happen all the time. Uh, and it's going to happen at the pro level. It's, it happens with betters. <laughs> and, you know, why, why that person, you know, kick a field goal in the last, right. you know, second play. <laughs> So I think it's just this system that affects all of us. Yeah, absolutely. And again, Michael from Arizona, great, great question. But it is absolutely a complete Pandora's box you've opened, which is which is the best possible thing that could happen for us as hosts, Mike, because we can really discuss this and make a, a strong episode about it. Um, I'll kind of talk from my own experience first, because I'm kind of experiencing this a bit right now. Um, and let me paint the situation. So. Uh, my son is on a, a, a 10U team that's doing very well. Um, everyone listening, know, all of you listening know I coach, right? So I see a lot of stuff. Now, I am not on the coaching staff for this team, okay? So this is how I approach that. Every game, I see things that, you know, are criticisms, good things that I, I, I and my, my, my mind inevitably goes, well, if I was coaching, this is what I would do. But, it's a huge but. I have to give those coaches the respect of being coaches and largely almost all the time, keep my mouth shut and keep it to myself. Now on top of that, and this is another part of it, Mike, that you alluded to parents will ask me, what do you think about this? What do you think? What would you do in that situation? And I have to be very careful yeah. to make sure that I don't accidentally usurp or go against the coaching staff. It's, and hard. it's, it's hard. Yeah. And, and the thing is this, um, it's a respect thing. All right. And I, and I also usually follow those questions up. Like they're doing a great job. They're doing a great job. Like I'm not in the locker room. I don't know what they're seeing, but Michael, my, my first thing is this. Um, if a coaching staff has not asked you for your opinion, 
do not give it to them. And I know that's really hard to say, all right, and really hard to do. It's going to create more problems if you do and you're not invited to um, than, than, than if you do it and even if you're right. Now, with that said, if a coaching staff comes up to you and says, hey, hey, what do you think? What do you think we can do better? Yeah, doors open. Have that conversation. Right. So let's let's step back and go through that process of what we've talked about a, a lot. Yeah. And, and this sounds like a new listener and and and, and it's great. I mean, we love, you know, the more new listeners, the better. Yeah. Um, but let's go back some let's go back in time a little bit to some episodes. Right. What are the some of the pitfalls that we can avoid being in uh, because of this is, is the number of things we strategize about all the time. Number one, pick the program you feel is best for your kid. If you've right. done that, if you've done that ahead of time, if you've done your homework ahead of time and, you know, listen, I'm trusting and the coaching staff that's here, I've done my research. I, I, I've i I've heard from other families like these coaches. Most coaches don't just appear for the first time at 12U. They've either come through the system or they came from a different program. It's very, it, it's very unlikely that the person just, this is my first time I'm ever going to coach. So do your research. That's one strategy we've talked about a number of times, and we could link up those episodes. And just think about, do your research on the program, know the program, know the staff. And know the philosophy of that staff. Number one. Number two, have has your t- and, and this is maybe for coaches more than parents. Have you been a part of a mission statement workshop? Have you sat down with your parents at the beginning of the year right. and told everyone this is your philosophy? This is how you work. This is my open door policy or my closed door policy. And this is where you as a parent, and and this is protecting the coaches. This yeah. is that yeah. you as a coach can help your parents collaborate on what your mission is that year and they can be a part of the process so that when these things do come up there's a checklist in their head this weekend my kid didn't my that kid got 18 minutes of ice time my kid got 16 i'm going to make us think about it well let's go back to the mission statement and let's go back to talking about on any given weekend your kid might get 23 minutes and this kid might get eight so it all is going to even out most of the time i would say it very rarely doesn't but if you never had that conversation and it wasn't a part of the ecosystem of the program, this is when we get anxiety, right? So right. that this, so there's a couple of different strategies there. Mission statement workshop, parents on board, understanding your program, researching what you want. And I think to your point, Lee, the other part is you've got to look at yourself and your family and your child, whoever's playing the game, and, and weigh the cost of undermining the coach yeah. that alienates your kid from the team to – shut your mouth and eat it up and teach in a different way about things that you're frustrated about and how you can manage through those. Right. And and let me, let me dive in here too. And I'm going to keep using my own situation. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, there's a few things that I go down the list, right? So strategy tactics aside, the first thing I ask myself is, does this coach, does this coaching staff care about my kid? And in my situation, they clearly do. Like they clearly want the best for my kid. I can live with that no matter what I see. So I think that that's the first question we have to ask ourselves is, is this coach there really care about these kids or is he there to coach? And that's to further his own agenda. I'd say most youth coaches are there and they care about the kids. Let's just kind of make that layman right now. Um, the second thing I look at is this, and, and you got to be curious a little bit, right? So when I watch a game, I see a lot of things. But I also have to remind myself, look, it's a, it's a 10U team or it's a 12U team and it practices because Michael brought up the practices versus gameplay. Well, fundamentals are more important than strategy in some cases at that age level, right? They, again, depends on where you're at. If it's U18, it's a different conversation, right? But, you know, they might be working things at practice. Like I'll give you a good example, all right? Um, I've, seen, I've seen my son's team do ridiculous amount of skating when I know they need to work on something tactical. Well, at his age, that is correct. That is correct. Skating is more important right now than the tactical side of things. Now, it's on the coach to balance that. Um, and I'm not sure how much of that's even in his control when you look at the USA Hockey Development Model and things that they have to do, quote unquote, right? But but the kids learning to be better skaters is actually more important than them understanding some of the tactics. I'm not saying tactics are not important. Please don't ever anybody take that away. But that's what I'm saying is I have to also weigh in my mind, okay, well, how much of this stuff really is is I want to see them do better on this versus they need to get the basic skill sets to become better hockey players so in the future they can do that. 
Mike, do you want to comment on that before I move on? I mean, just about the, as far as the skating go, like, you know, the tactical piece and the training piece. I mean, listen, sometimes you just have really bad coaches. I mean, that happens you know, maybe, and they yeah. just don't know. I mean, like, like I said, I look at, I, I probably look at things so differently. Like, like to me, no, know, knowing what I know now and knowing the knowledge base that I've been around and knowing the the professionals that I trust and, and seeing it firsthand, what happens, like I would never bag skate kids at the end of practice. Right. I just right. I would and, never and just do it. Clear, I'm not saying that's what they're doing. They're doing no, actually no, no. good skating. Like, no, no, like, but yeah, in okay, the drills and in the practice, ninety yeah, percent yeah. of their practice is probably skating. But what I'm right. saying is, like, like when you see a practice and you're like, because I, I'll tell you right now, most of the parents I know would think that's the greatest thing in the world. Like, right. oh, look at that coach; he is God. Look at right. he's you're right. at the end of the practice. Those kids are going to be the most, the best conditioned athletes on the ice. Well, the 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 the, the, the science and the facts have told us that. Bag skating and sprinting is the is the single thing you can do the most to de- to to not help your child succeed in skating. Yeah, nothing, so yeah. and they're and they're not going to get conditioning and they're all cheating anyway and they all you know you all regulate to the there's, best. There's no purpose but to get out of it, and that's not it's, a good it, drill. Well, not and not only that, yeah. and it's and to me it's just lazy coaching. It's like oh, you know what you know what the best thing to do? Let's do the five circle drill and then bag skate the kids. That's an easy practice, right? That's easy for me to conceptualize. Yeah. So, but that being aside, I agree with you. If 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 a coach is following the standards of the right. age group, and they're they're leaning have more heavily on something that might not help them tactically in the game succeed, like they might not be working on the triangle offense or the the, right. the one three one or the you know, the, but they're working it's on the like transition field. as a skill set, yeah, right. It, it, then then I got to defer to the coach. That's his plan. But if, right. but if you but if you're winging it. Like, again, this goes right back. To, let's go back to the, the golden rule, right? If you're in a team that has a coach that's winging it, but you didn't do your research to find out who the coach was in the first place, that falls on you. That's yeah, your- well, I, I, I will give Michael this. He says he's in Arizona, and I don't know what the youth hockey scene is in Arizona, but I imagine it's it's not as abundant as, like, where you and I live. So there, there may not be as much of a choice. Um, but we'll get into this in a minute. There, there's other ways right. to kind of move beyond. I, I just wanted to, to say that, Mike, because you're absolutely right. right. Like, where we live, there's there's plenty of teams to choose from. Well, and, and there's, and, but, but again, even if you do, if you even if you only have one team to choose from, right. you know what you're getting into ahead Absolutely. of time, and then I you have to that. either accept it or not. Either you have to say, okay, I'm accepting this. Like if I join a country club and they don't have a tennis court, and then I complain that there's no tennis at the country club, that's on me. I'm like, well, there was never tennis at the country club. Right. Uh, right. Why one, would you? De- why would you demand tennis? Uh, there's no tennis club. It's so all pickleball now, anyway, Mike. That's you join the pickle. You join the pickleball <laughs> golf club, not the tennis right. and, and pool club. You know, right. so it's like, again, you just have to. You, you knew going in what it was, right. uh, and if you didn't, that's that's yeah, you, you learn. It, it, look it, again, the hockey journey is a journey, and I always say this. Look, I've had more. Uh, I'm sorry, I've had less great coaches than than okay coaches again saying that again i've had more poor coaches in my youth hockey career than great ones the great ones made a huge impact but i think that that's somewhat normal all right like you kind of get what you get and i and i've had great coaches that knew nothing yeah. about hockey like they right. actually didn't help Touch me become life. a better hockey player right. i was just like i don't know this guy's a fun guy like i really like working with this person but they didn't right. know the like, guy look back and we used to i would joke with my you know the alumni of the of the teams I played with, like, yeah, well, that guy didn't know anything. Right. Like, he didn't know what he was doing out there. Well, but like, let's use the Gretzky gave, example. He gave up his time. He was yeah. there for 25 weeks. He was, he never missed a practice. He always had pucks. And I don't know. It, we, uh, we, uh, it seemed like I had fun. I, I, and I didn't quit. Yeah. I, I, I always like to use the Gretzky example. And, and God bless Wayne Gretzky and everything he's done for the game, but he wasn't the best coach. And again, I always, I always, when people ask me about that, I say, how is he supposed to teach people to see the game like he did? He can't do it. It's not possible. So there's lots of different types of coaches out there. I, I'm going to echo what you said earlier in the show too, Mike, that just because someone hasn't played doesn't mean they're not knowledgeable on the game. I think that's a huge misnomer. Obviously, if you have played, you have other knowledge. But like, I never write someone off. Um, and again, especially somebody, if you've been watching the sport 20, 30 years, you're probably going to have a clue, hopefully, about or something. somebody up just because yeah. they play. I mean, it's yeah, the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, like, it, no. it's a balance. Knowledge is knowledge. Um, now, I, I want to continue this thing kind of with my example, because I made a mistake earlier in this year by accident. Um, again, reiterating, have I have complete respect for my kids' coaching staff. Um, I always have thoughts and opinions that I want to share, and it eats me alive a little bit that I am not in a position to share, but I respect the coaching staff enough not to not to step over unless I am asked. Now, this brings us to the next part of this. 
And Mike, I know you've experienced this before. I made this mistake earlier in the season. So some of the kids on this team, I have coached in the past. So they know me and they come to me and I gave a one player a tip for a tactical move that he could make in a game. And he did it and it worked. And his coaches said, Hey, don't do that again. Right. So now suddenly, and this, this is where I, where I took it. There's no ego with me, right? A younger version of me would have been like, but I was right. This was right. It's not about me. If they're telling him not to do it, I actually felt bad because now I felt like I stepped on their toes a little bit. That's not what I'm trying to do. It doesn't matter if I was right or not in that situation, they're coaching the team, which brings me to kind of the final piece of this. Once that happened to me, I realized, okay, I really have to be smart about what I say, who I say it to, because I'm not trying to cause a problem on the team. That, that's where my mind goes, okay? Not, other people don't maybe think that way. So this is where the final piece of the puzzle is, Michael, to answer your question. You're the parent. You're the father. You can have conversations with your son or daughter at home about the game, about what you see. Just make sure that they understand. I, and, and I'm speaking as a coach here. I think it's always very important that you make sure there's an accountability here. Like, I'm not coaching your team. You have to listen to your coaches because that's who's in, who's in charge right now. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I think you can learn to do. If your coach is telling you not to do that, just note this in the back of your head. You're with your kid more than the coaching staff is. You can teach. And I've had great conversations with my son and daughter about the game away from the coaching staff to help them understand something. But they understand whether you like the coach or not, that is your coach right now. And that that you you will be a better player in the future if you teach your kid to have respect for the situation. I am not saying you have to love every coach you have and that you have to agree with everything every coach has ever done. But you need to respect the office of coach. Because if you're not careful, and Mike, I'm going to throw it right to you on this. If you are not careful with this, you will teach your kid inadvertently to not be coachable. And if your kid is not coachable, they will go absolutely nowhere in anything, <laughs> not just the sport. Okay, coachability is a major skill set when you get to the higher levels, right? So kind of heed that warning of have conversations, understand and respect the office of coaches, right? And teach the way you can teach. But at the end of the day, Michael, and again, I, I'm, I'm thinking this might not be the answer you want. I'm sorry. If a coach has not opened up the door for you to give opinions, do not give opinions to that coach and do not, or try your best, I should say, not to commiserate too much outside because it's not conducive to the environment, right? And again, the, the things that scare me as a team builder, Mike, is when I walk into a locker room and I hear players blaming each other or blaming the coaches or blaming the standings or blaming, there's a lot of finger pointing. And I mean, it's a societal problem too. But what I want to see when I walk into a locker room is everybody trying to find a solution together. And again, when you come into the car with your kid, we've had episodes about this too. The car ride's not for coaching, but when you say to the kid in the car, well, if Johnny would have passed you the puck there, we would have gotten a goal. Or if your coach put you out in this situation, it would have changed the game. You're teaching your kid to be unaccountable. There's another way to say that. I'm going to sauce the puck to you, Mike. I always love saying that for our transition. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it's when you're a coach in the locker room, you know what the conversation is at home because a 12 year, 12 year old and 11 year old and eight year old is not, they're inherently positive. They are, they just, they're inherently yeah. want to be good teammates. They inherently, like they come into it. Well, that's why they're there. They want to be friends. I mean, that's wanna why be, you go to wanna be friends and yeah. be on a team. Get away from positive. mom and dad. <laughs> and you should be able to, you should, and I, 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 I always, uh, I always use the word manipulate and that's the wrong word influence. You should be able to influence your child into not accepting that it might be right or wrong what the coach is doing, yeah. but more accepting that, well, this is the decision the coach made. So you have to either learn to work around it or just deal with it. Like you have to right. figure out different strategies. I'm like, well, if the coach wants you to do this, then why don't you, you know, why don't you do this and then try to turn this into this? Right. Like, okay. Oh, you know, like uh, this is a real, this just happened literally this morning. So the the player comes in, he's, he's beating kids down the ice. He's, he's really, you know, he's a defenseman, an offensive defenseman, a player that is coming down the ice and making plays happen, pulling up, getting assists, you know, really a dynamic individual, right? The coaching staff says, Hey, we love the way you're doing this. And, but, you know, uh, we need you to get the puck off the glass and get it out. 
and we can't have you play this way. So guess what? We're going to have, we, we, and then, so the, what they determine is as they go through, they, they say, we're going to make you a, a forward. <laughs> so, so now, you know, now mom and dad could go and the player could go one or two ways, right? right. I'm not a forward. I play D the hell with you. I'm out of here. Or, yep. The coach doesn't know what they're talking about. These guys are idiots. I'm going to write an email about how wrong they are. So what is, what does this family do? Okay. The coaches is, is the one that's running the program. You're, you're, you're a younger player on the team, play winger, learn from this, take those skill sets that you're going to learn and use right. them. Obviously <clears throat> this coach is seeking now, whether they're a good coach or not. Now I would contend that they're, that the coach doesn't really know much about the modern game. It, that opinion stays to myself. Take what the coach is seeing in you and and work around that and then be the best player that that coach thinks you are. Right. And then you have a lot more leverage and a lot more, you know, money in the bank to be able to go back and say, you know what? I really like this, but I think I can contribute here as well. Yeah. I'll also say too, um, from a fan point or a watching point, um, it's very easy to find things wrong with the game. You might not see all the things going right with the game too, right? Mike, you know what I mean? Like, like sometimes when you're hyper vigilant, especially with your own kid, you're going to say, well, all this stuff needs to happen, but you don't see the five good things that are going on as well. Um, now, also with your situation that you just said, you know, I, it's funny you mentioned that. I remember when I started playing, and this is always going to be the theme what I'm about to bring up. For everybody listening, this is this is the key to the whole thing I'm about to bring up. It always comes back to the same thing. Um, I started as a D. A lot of people don't know that. Um, I just thought I was a D. And I remember when they moved me up to forward, um, I was really kind of devastated. I was younger. I didn't know what, what to do. I had never played forward before. Um, now, it ended up working out. But looking back, what I wish had happened is if the coach had communicated, communication is the key to everything, why they were moving up to forward. And they they did throughout the season. They said, look, you're you're this is, you know, back in the 90s. They said, you're far too fast to be a defenseman. You know, we need to develop your offensive skills that we think you can help the team out better here. If they had told me that right away, I would have been like, okay, that makes sense. And it's an opportunity to learn another position. So again, Mike, in your situation, if it's communicated clearly, look, I know you're a defenseman. I think this is going to help your game. You play forward. It'll help the team. It'll help you. You'll understand this position better. It'll make you a better defenseman in the long run because you're going to understand how to play offense a little bit better. Now there's a conversation happening. It's communication. Yeah, but kind of, Go ahead. No. I'm just saying, but ultimately, like this conversation is around that Monday morning quarterbacking, right? The Monday morning yeah. coaching. And, and I think you you nailed it earlier. Like, don't do it. Don't do <laughs> so, it. I mean, Unless the door is open. Out. Yeah. Well, and look, Michael also asked, like, about like what's the healthy dose? And Mike, Michael, just so you know, these are super fair questions. I'm actually glad yeah. you asked them. Like, I think I think a lot of people feel this way. Um, we're just being honest. Like, you, you were talking <clears> about what's the healthy dose? Is, should there be a, like a platform where we can put info, in, in, input to staff? Uh, for interaction, honestly, if the coach has not created that, no, no, it is not our. Well, place go, let's parents. go back to let's go yeah. back to the coach is always right. You know the the Stu Leonard's philosophy, right? The the so go back to coach is always right. I think I think what you need to see is if the door wasn't available, if it wasn't open at the beginning, and there wasn't a process for that at the beginning, and this is a great learning experience. It, get through the year. And then present it to next year's program right. and say, listen, this is what I experienced last year as a parent. And I'm wondering if, in fact, there could be a way for parents to have a, a, a forum. Now, it all depends on the program. I would say Mike Benelli in 1993 would be like, are you crazy? Right, I would be There's too. no <laughs> way I am ever going to yeah. talk to you. Like, right. Me it's too. just not going to happen. The younger version of me would not. I, I know what I'm doing. Do not tell me what to do. That is the younger version of me. Yes, the older version of me is like, I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me what to do. I'm just kidding. It's a but little. The caller, but the caller makes a great point. And I yeah. say that, and I've saved this now as not only a parent, but even before I was a, a parent of a player, even when I started understanding kids better, that the parent, the family is with the children all the time. All I only the time. them for two hours. It's 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 so, their life. That the, so the, I want, I yeah. do want to know more about what's going on with that player and how I can work on strategies to work that player. Now, am I going to sit down and have a discussion on how the power play is going to be set up? It's going to be really hard for me to do that as a coach, because once you open the door up for, for this individual to have a conversation about the power play, 15 other people, listen, and, and I've, listen, I've had, I, I can't, 
like the worst thing in the world. The best thing in the world is 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 communication apps, and the worst thing in the world is communication. It's so apps, true, right? Yeah. Because because it opens up like, oh, can can you believe this player is not playing as much as this player? And all of a sudden, right text messaging i've seen it mike i've seen a full-out commiseration conversation happen with the coaches in the chat in the chat and, like yeah. like does this guy even know what he's doing i'm like i'm right what here are you doing? i'm right yeah. here i'm sitting right here well like, I, I think we also have to mention this too like you're talking about the mixed bag of communication <laughs> um and this again this is for michael you're listening to this this is for everybody listening i would love to be in a position where i could take everyone's opinion as a coach but uh-huh. this is what you have to realize there's going to be 20 different opinions if I open it up, I'm going to be disappointing half the people that are giving me their opinions because it's not going to be what they want. And this is where the coaching staff has to kind of trust in their staff a little bit, right? Everyone sees something different. And again, from Michael's point of view, I, I know I know you probably have very valuable input. I, I mean that. But as a, you got to let the coach coach. You got to let them do that. And if they're bad coaches, you know, every organization, I'm a big believer in this, should have, to have an end-of-the-year survey where the parents can give their thoughts on the coaching staff. All right. I, 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 as a coach, I endorse that. I think they should have a platform to be able to give their thoughts right now. Again, hopefully the thoughts are conducive to really good people did a great job teaching my kid. If, if I think if the survey says, well, the power play sucked and this is what I would have done. I think you're telling the organization something, but I, I, I just want it to be understood. It's a mixed bag for coaches. If we open the door for every opinion, like anything in life, this isn't just coaching. You're going to get 20 different opinions. You know, it's and it's, it's, it's – like, We, we tried to, to pick out it. dinner at last tournament. It was like a nightmare. It was for the dinner. Yeah. Just pick the dinner. Yeah. Just tell me where I'm going. Yeah. Go to Jersey Mike's. Get a sub. No, I but, don't like but, it. But, if you, I don't you, like you. it, I won't eat there. But yeah. I think it's – it's again, yeah. well, I, I just fall on the fact that if I – if this person – this individual is giving up their time and their effort and there's, and there, the, Michael the, did say oh. that Mike, to be fair, he did say yeah. that in his call. Yeah. But again, you know? these are strategies of, of we're in it. We're in it, right. We're in the yeah. season. I'm not happy with some of the decisions getting made. I, I, I think I could do a better job at evaluating the talent. All might be true. And, and, and it might very yeah. well and don't I, do it. <laughs> I, I sit in the stands yeah. and because of my, you know, position of who I am with other parents, and there's a play that happens. I can't. I I can tell you right now. When I'm not coaching, I get the like. What would you do there? What, right. what would you? Oh, do I there? get that like, every game now. I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything there. I said. I said no. it is. I said, wow, the guys are they're, they're working hard. And you know, well, Mike, if I can, that. I'll give you another one. I was asked one time, uh, and just to give you, I'm not saying all parents ask ridiculous questions, but I remember I was I was coaching might one time, and a parent asked me like, well, what was the plan for the lines today? Like about who's playing with who, and I said, "What? What are you talking about? We don't have lines and might. Like we we just we we rotate. We everybody gets similar ice time. It's might, right? You know. So, and they were like shocked that we didn't have a strategy for lines. And I'm like, we have ten players. It's never like. What are you talking about? Yeah. What were you thinking there in that lineup? I go, well, I was thinking that the kids showed up. At same time, it's like if I get to Pee Wee and someone's asking me about the one three one, like I'm not expecting them to execute a one three one in Pee Wee. They're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna have a clue yet. But um, again, even if they could, it. but even if yeah. they could, where where are you leading your development? Are you leaning right. it on an hour of one of of running the one three one and learning the discipline of what that takes, or right. are you doing ninety minutes of skating work? So again, on that note, let me go back to this this team that my son's on. Right, who so I'm going to keep reiterating. I think they're doing a great job. Right, every game, I could write an email to this coach of this is what I'm seeing, good and bad. I choose not to do that out of respect for the coaching staff. Here's some other things I noticed. Yeah, because when's he going to start emailing you saying, hey, Lee, I watched your podcast the other day, and <laughs> holy crap, your audio is off, the lighting yeah, was bad. Right. Vanelli doesn't even know what <laughs> Monday morning talking about. Monday morning podcasting? Yeah, Vanelli right. doesn't I don't know what he's talking it's, about. It's, you know, he's, It's a respect yeah. thing, right? Now, the other thing, too, is this. I, I look at it, and I go, okay, I see a lot of tactical stuff. Then I take it down. I'm like, you know what? These kids also need to work on their basic shooting fundamentals some basic skating fundamentals, some basic transition fundamentals, which already trump everything I've already said in my head, right? So it's like, you know, honestly, it's so hard as a parent watching to know where the development should be, but everyone's going to have an opinion, Michael, to your point. And I respect I respect that you have an opinion. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying you should throw everything away. Now, this kind of brings us to the final piece of the puzzle. Um, and Mike's going to laugh when I say this. And I'm not saying this with any kind of sarcasm. Really, I'm not. 
I'm saying this just very truthfully. If you think you know and you really believe that, you need to volunteer to coach. Step up to the plate and volunteer to coach. And if you're saying, well, they'll never let me just jump in now, you're right. <laughs> All right, you have to start down at the lower levels or see if you can jump on as an assistant or offer your services. And if they say no, they say no. Um, and, and again, I hope I'm echoing to you, Michael, the, the caller. It is frustrating. I, I It is a frustrating place to be when you have an opinion, you want to share it. I'm going to reiterate what I said at the very beginning. If you are not asked by the coaching staff for your opinion, do not give it. Do not email it. Do not email the coach saying, hey, I just saw these things and I want you to know. It never, ever looks right to us. I'm, I'm just giving you that warning. The best the is. Second, the second half is don't commiserate with the other parents. Oh. It's going to create a bad environment. We all, this is my final thought on this, Mike. We all as parents that are not coaching play a role in making sure that our kids are in an environment that is fun. And no one takes the fun out of hockey faster than adults. So what am I saying? Be a kid for a minute. <laughs> Try not to commiserate. Let them, let them have fun. No matter what, good coach, bad coach, anything in between, Mike, they're going to learn something. You're going to learn what you like, what you don't like. And another thing you said, Mike, that you just, I just, sorry, I just remembered this. Every kid's also motivated differently. So what you think might work for your kid might not work for a bunch of other kids. Yeah. The opening, the opening text message or email can't be coach. I never do this. I'm not that parent, but those are, those yeah. I love. Those are, those are some of my best. This and is then, what I'm seeing. And then the best was um, just recently. I never do this, Mike. I never do this. I never, but... do, I, I never do this, but, but I need, I, I really need to, need to make a comment about this now if there's a kid in the locker room and there's being bullied and there's there's an issue oh, where that's, that's different. you know yeah. uh, uh, there's there's like something going on with text messaging chains with the kids privately or yeah, we'll, we'll say safety where there's, if there's a like safety the kid, concern. Yeah, your, your yeah. kid's being singled out in a negative way and you're and he's a 12 year old or 11 year old yes great, get, great you gotta get, get in there yeah. and, and, and and have well, a and, and and most organizations have a method for you to communicate that to be right fair. and if they don't shame on yeah. them but if they and if they yeah. don't just get in there you're a parent that's your number one goal you're yeah. your that job. is fine and, and if anyone's thinking that right now i mike i'm 100 with you if if a kid's mental health physical health is in yeah. danger you have to act as the parent yeah be be right? loud and, and 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 voice that concern now on the other side, don't be the parent and you see, you know, commiserating. So I, I got the, I got a great story. So I'm in a game, in a game. We're in a, a hockey game <laughs> and I get an email. During uh, the game. During the game, with the little ting on my phone, like ding. I'm like, well, that's weird. I'll put it, we'll look at that later. Why was your phone on, Mike? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, because I, I, I catch up on my, I get it. I get my, it. Yeah, I catch yeah. up on my, on my, my, so he listens pop. to our kids play hockey while he's, I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta, yeah, I gotta come down from the cliff. <laughs> so, um, I get, I get, how, how do I say this without divulging? So, uh, okay. So the, the email is the, the organization name defensive Alliance at gmail.com. So somebody went out during the game, a parent made an email, a Gmail account. Oh my God. Well, the, the, this is, this is a true story. This is, uh, this is and, and these guys listen to the show. So shame on you. You that you, you're listening right now. So right. The, the organization name, Defensive Alliance at gmail.com about, and my son's a defenseman on the team. So there's, there's, there's 60, five email addresses in there saying how they're not happy with the way the defense is being run, who's playing, who's not playing. This is, I'm going to say during the game. During the game. And we're winning a game. And, and, and so we're like, winning the game. Love so that. Winning. Love that little tidbit. But again, obviously, this is this is when you say about, you know, commiserating. So right. one parent decided, you know, you know, I'm going to I'm going to say something. Yeah, you should say something. And then all of a sudden I'll make an email address real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, But we don't want him to know who is which saying, is, which is bullshit. And I'll say that right now. Oh, I knew call exactly someone out. Did it. Call someone out with your face. Don't be anonymous with it. That's oh, wrong. it's the worst. It's the worst. So I know. I know. So I chime. Sorry, back. kids, if you're listening. I, I'm chiming back. Why is it my name on the email? <laughs> my son's. <Yeah. laughs> I said, wait. I don't. I. I don't get a say in this. I'm part That's of. That's awesome. Team. Clients too, yeah. right? So I'm saying I, I. I couldn't believe it. Like it was like one of these things where 
And I, I, I did, I did my own reflection. I'm like, I'm not, I can't, I'm not going to answer this on the bridge right now. I'm going to just whew, take a deep breath, read this. And then, and then I respond to it eventually, but, but I'm like, you know, I, I, I just so you know, the game. That, that's 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 like a negative twenty four hour rule. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was, it was actually unbelievable. I mean, it was one of those things where it was it was, it was laughable because I was like laughing at the bench. Jeez. Like I'm like I'm like, do you see this? <laughs> like, and then I'm looking up in the stands trying to figure out who's typing. Oh so I, I think it's like so so to me, you can undermine. Now imagine what that does to the to the mindset of the other four parents that you've commiserated with, and now this is when you start seeing teams in the stands. And you see it seeing yep. parents, yep. and, they're, and they're going here. And Separate. this is why Mike Pinelli sits in the corner up here right. in the little the little booth. And and this is why this is why you have fraction. And I can tell you right now, I can tell from if I go to a hockey tournament and I see the fractured stands, yeah. I can almost tell you how well that team's going to do. When I, I, I and how and where they're well, going to be. I, I'm going to say this again, Mike. The kids are the ones who suffer. The kids are the ones who suffer from this. Kind of always. Stuff. It's not, always. It's not. And, you know, and, and the parents and the unwitting parents that the parents are like, just go along with the flow well, instead well, of saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. About what this I does want to the coach. nothing to do with this. Think about what this does to the coach. You're going to get one of two outcomes with this. All right. If you have a younger, I shouldn't say younger. If you have an egotistical coach, they may punish your kid now for doing that. All right. Which is wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's wrong. All right. If the coach ends up punishing a kid because their parents did something, that's wrong. Or the more likely scenario, which has happened to me, happened to you, is you actually care about these kids. And now every time you look at that kid, you're thinking about the defensive alliance email and you got to yeah, move over like, that email like, oh, and make a good decision for that kid. So you've just created a hurdle where there doesn't need to be one. So yeah. uh, look, look, rounding this out. Yeah. I respect, I mean this, that everyone has an opinion. I, you could take this way outside of hockey. <laughs> I respect everyone's right to have an opinion. Mm -hmm. But there's a time and a place to, A, share that opinion. And if you're not welcomed to share your opinion, please don't do it. You will create more problems. And I am talking to you, even if you think your team is having a horrible, horrible season, you will not help that situation. I'm just telling you from experience. Yeah, You can help the situation by explaining to your child that not everything in life is fair, that this is a bad situation we're in. What are we going to do as father, mother, son, and daughter yep. to learn from this and improve on it? Not every year is going to be great. Now, again, Michael, I'm talking really pointedly. I'm not the, the caller. I'm not talking just to you here. All right. I, yep. I, 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 I'm living it. Like, like, this is why it's such a Pandora's box because I'm living what you're saying on one end, but I'm also a coach on the other end. <laughs> that hears opinions like this. So again, the solution, I'm talking to the coaches right now. We've had this on other episodes. Very, very clearly at the beginning of the season and maybe throughout the season, tell the parents, this is how to communicate with me. This is what I would like to hear, what I'd like not like to hear. If you have an opinion so strong, you need to share it. You can send it to me. I may or may not respond. Okay, but I want you to know that I'm here for you. Every coach has to do that on their own. Another thing, coaches. <clears throat> this is a tough one. You have to remove some ego from this too. You can't take it personally when a parent has an opinion. They all have opinions. Now I'm going to tell you that all the coaches, if you have aspirations of coaching beyond youth hockey, you're going to get way more opinions. You put a fan base into it, you'll get opinions. You don't think you get you don't think you get 18,000 people making an opinion? They all love you when you're winning. Pro hockey game. They <laughs> right. all want you to shoot the puck. Everyone wants you to shoot the puck. Right. I mean, you know, I have conversations about this all the time, you know, about, you know, it's very easy to watch an NHL NHL game as a fan and say, oh, I know what, what they should be doing. Well, maybe you do, but you're not there, right? That person's there. So, again, rounding this out, it's frustrating. I love that you have an opinion because it means you're passionate about the game. Here's another thing, Mike, we didn't say this, we didn't say this earlier. Um, and again, Michael, not just talking to you. Yeah. How much research into your, your opinion have you done? Right. Very easy for someone to point and say, hey, shoot the puck. You got to shoot the puck there. Right. Here's the thing. Most people that are yelling, shoot the puck. That's kind of a red flag for me. Right. Because it's not about just shooting the puck all the time. Sometimes it's about finding the right shot. Right. So 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 continually educate yourself about the game, which is also a good thing for your kids. 
right? I could go on all day. It's such a right, right. It's all, there's always there's a million different things that can happen. I right. mean, I, how many times have you heard somebody say, "Oh my God, you know, why aren't they that that guy that why aren't they making that guy a captain? He should be the captain." Well, oh. you don't know what goes on in those locker rooms. You don't know what's no going idea. on. Idea. The kid, the kid no. who's nice at home might not be great in the locker you room. Don't, you don't. You have no yeah. idea. You cannot have a conversation about what people have in depthly. And, and, and how to use certain personnel. You don't have no idea. You don't like the youth hockey level. You don't know that this kid doesn't ever come to practice. How come that kid's on the power play? He's the best player. Well, he's been in practice in four months. So yeah. don't, don't, you, again, I, I just. Every I, situation's I, different. Yeah. Every yeah. situation is different. Yeah. I think that the, 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 the default is don't say anything, figure it out. Yeah. Now, and the other side is okay. And then, mm-hmm. then if that's not it, then find the strategies that you can use to right. slowly, help change the culture and that or volunteer to coach or I, I, go get your certification yeah. do your yeah. 27 hours and get out and, 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 and go help. Right. I, 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 again, man, I think we could end it there again, Michael, it's a fantastic question. It's yeah. a fantastic question. That's never going to have a yes or no answer to it. Um, I, I hope we convey that. I hope we convey that we understand the frustration, but we also see the other side of it and that, that every team is going to be different. You might have a coach one year. That's like, tell me everything. You might have a coach that says, do not speak to me ever. And and unfortunately, you know, when we look at this, uh, this will be my final thought, Mike, right? From a broad life lesson standpoint, right? Because that's really the key in youth hockey at the end of the day. Your kids are going to run into the situation in college if they go to college or at jobs when they go to jobs. And again, you can always equate this as a team. It's a group of people. The beauty of a team, and this is what I look for as a parent, and this is what this coaching staff, my kids just running this out is doing. He's bringing these kids together to believe that they can move forward with a goal together. That is the greatest gift a coach can give anybody in youth hockey, because mm-hmm. you're giving them the idea that, Oh, when I work well with other people, we can accomplish a goal, right? That's really what I want my kid understanding as they go into the, to the real world, along with work ethic and striving. And you're going to have to earn things. Again, that's my base platform. If my kid's great on the power play and he hasn't learned that I've really, I have really failed as a parent. Right. In my opinion. All right. So, yeah, Michael, great question. I mean, really great question because we can't answer right. it, you know, um, and, and this is what I would say to the audience that's listening. I invite you to share your opinions on this because there's going to be a lot of them. So wherever you're seeing this episode or you can email us team at our kids play Join our Facebook group, our kids play hockey. This is one that's going to drum up a lot of discussion. Um, I'd also like to open it up to you of parents. What has worked for you in the past? Have you had great communication with the coach with this? Or do you have horror stories like the defensive alliance emailing Mike in the middle of a game, which Mike, you've never told me that story. That that is actually insanity to me. That that, that like the gall to do that. And I don't know these people. When well, my like kids are done playing hockey gonna, during a game. When all my kids are done playing hockey, I'm gonna out them. But I, I got a little ways to go. Yeah, well, hey, listen, you might as well buy that URL. It's actually a pretty good name, defensivealliance.com. They would <laughs> email to create that. Again. <laughs> No Love crazy it. hockey parent thinks they're the crazy hockey parent. Michael, <laughs> I know you're not a crazy hockey parent because you, you took the time to eat to, to, to send this to us. Yeah. Just remember that. Nobody thinks they're the crazy hockey parent. All right. You got to, you might be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mike raises his head for those of you listening. All right. That was a great episode. Uh, I'm going to encourage all of you again. If you've got a question, you can email us again, team and our kids play hockey. Uh, you can send us, you can DM it to us the audio of your question or you can just write the question we love getting submissions from you because again we, we have plenty of topics we can talk about but we're really here to serve you so uh michael from arizona whose kids in 12 you travel really appreciate you doing that and we appreciate all you listening to this episode this is uh, been a fun one mike like i said we don't usually get questions it's like eh, it's hard to answer that all right no it's all good I, I, I keep them coming and like i said i'm sure there's plenty of opinions i'd love to hear them because um you know i'm a, i'm because I'm, I'm monday morning coach and uh yeah yeah, definitely could use some good strategies to uh (laughs) help fight those yeah well that's it for this episode of our kids play hockey want to thank all of you for listening enjoy your week every day including monday we'll see you on the next kids oh wow we'll see you on the next our kids play hockey skate on everybody we hope you enjoyed this edition of our kids play hockey make sure to like and subscribe right now if you found value wherever you're listening whether it's a podcast network a social media network, or our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. Also, make sure to check out our children's book, When Hockey Stops, at whenhockeystops.com. It's a book that helps children deal with adversity in the game and in life. We're very proud of it. But thanks so much for listening to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, and we'll see you on the next episode.